All right, so in this example here, we have a turbine, single inlet, single exit. And on the inlet side, we have the temperature, pressure, and velocity. We have on the exit side, the quality, pressure, velocity, and volumetric flow rate. We're told this is an adiabatic turbine, so we have no heat transfer. And then lastly, we're looking for the power in kilowatts. If you recall, when you have a single inlet, single exit control volume, you can just apply the energy balance equation over this entire turbine. So you'll have that zero equals the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy, which would be H1 minus H2, plus the kinetic energy, which would be V1 squared minus V2 squared divided by 2 plus the uh, potential energy, which would just be the gravity times the change in elevation, Z1 minus Z2. This is the energy balance equation over a single inlet, single exit control volume. Now remember that this turbine was adiabatic, so we actually have no heat transfer. And then we don't have a change in elevation here, Z1 equals Z2, it wasn't specified, so we can go ahead and cancel out our potential energy as well. And now if we just rearrange for the power, we'll have that the power W dot equals the mass flow rate times the change in enthalpy, which is H1 minus H2, plus the velocity or the kinetic energy, I should say, V1 squared minus V2 squared divided by 2. So now to find that power, what we need is we need the mass flow rate, we need these two enthalpies, and we need these velocities. So right off the bat, the enthalpies can be found because we have the temperature and pressure at the inlet, and then we have the quality and pressure at the exit, so those should be no problem at all for the properties tables. And then the velocities, so V1 was given, V2 also given, so that's just a matter of finding the mass flow rate now. So if you recall that the specific volume is the volumetric flow rate divided by the mass, uh, mass flow rate, we can rearrange this equation here to have that the mass flow rate M dot equals the volumetric flow rate, divide by the specific volume. So remember that we have one inlet, one exit, so that M dot one equals M dot two. It'd be more reasonable to use the right side here for the volumetric flow rate and specific volume, just because you're given the volumetric flow rate at the exit. So we'll go ahead and add a couple of subscripts here. So we'll use V2 for the volumetric flow rate and V2 for the specific volume. It doesn't matter which side you choose, but in this case, if they gave us the volumetric flow rate on the left side of the turbine, I would have probably used the left side. It just makes your life a lot easier to use what's given. So now let's find that specific volume. So if we have one or 0 0.8 bar and x2 equals 1, we can go to our table A3 and we go to 0 0.8 bar and we go to our saturated vapor and we have 2.087 for our specific volume. So now if we divide our uh, volumetric flow rate 9.48 cubic meters per second by our specific volume of 2.07 cubic meters per kilogram, we'll have the, our mass flow rate m dot equals 4.54 kilograms per second. So now let's start building our energy balance equation over here on the left side for the power. So we'll have w dot equals the mass flow rate of 4.54. And now we need to find our enthalpies. So for H1, we have T1 equals 500 C and P1 equals 40 bar. So turn to table A3, and if you go to 40 bar, you'll see that the saturation temperature is 250. We had a temperature of 500, so we're in the superheated region. So we'll turn to table A4, once again go to 40 bar, this time you have 500 degrees, and if you have your specific enthalpy here, you have 3445.3 kilojoules per kilogram. So I just threw that into the equation here, now we have to find H2, which we have a quality of X2 equals 1, and P2 equals 0 0.8 bar. So we'll be in table A3, which is the saturated water table. So now we go to table, or sorry, uh, pressure of 0 0.8 bar. And if we go to our saturated vapor specific enthalpy, we have Hg, which is 2665.8 kilojoules per kilogram. And now we just have to fill in our velocities. So we'll have V1 was 200 squared, or 200 and then you square it. And then V2 was 150, and now we just square that, divide it by 2. And now you have the tricky part, because over here for these specific enthalpies, you were actually dealing with a prefix of kilo, so times 1,000. And over here in the velocity, you don't have a prefix because you just have meters per second, or in this case, meters squared per second squared. So a joule, which is a unit of work, would break down, or a joule per kilogram, which is the base unit for enthalpy, would break down into a meter squared per second squared. 
However, because you have the kilo prefix here, these values here are actually multiplied by, by 1000 in terms of joules. So either you have to do one of two things, either you have to divide the velocity by 1000 or you have to multiply the specific enthalpy by 1000. So I'm going to add a conversion factor of dividing the velocity by 1000. So I'll have one divided by 1000 on the velocity and now we can close the bracket. And now we're going to be adding apples to apples. And now if you just plug this into your calculator, you'll have that the power of the turbine equals 3578.66 kilowatts. So therefore, the closest answer here is approximately going to be C, 3580 kilowatts. Keep in mind that a positive power means that the turbine's generating power, which is correct because turbines are a power generating device.